Join Mark and Trina Hankins for three days of teaching as we unlock the secrets of the Apostle Paul's revelation. This will be the first public meeting in the brand new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center in Woodworth, Louisiana. This event will be life-changing as we learn what happened from the cross to the throne and how Jesus' victory wasn't just for him, but his resurrection gave us victory. You don't want to miss these powerful three days, November 7th through the 9th, 2023. For more information and to register, please visit markhankins.org. It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program today. I'm Mark Hankins. This is my wife, Trina, and we are so glad you could join us today. All this week, we have been studying the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Christ, yes. and we've been studying specifically faith in that blood and what the blood of Jesus has done. Number one, in heaven, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12 says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. When he says he entered in once into the holy place, that simply means he did this once and for all. Mm -hmm. once for all time, once for all of eternity, once for every man, once for every problem, once for every blessing. He did it once, he did it once, and he obtained eternal redemption for us with his own blood. So if wow. the devil is giving you a hard time. We give him a bedtime story and we say once upon a time, God was manifest once. in the flesh, amen, <laughs> and the precious blood of Jesus <laughs> cleanses us. In other words, what he shed that blood on the cross and then he took his blood into heaven. One translation I think from Ephesians 4 where it says, he descended into the lowest place mm, and he good. ascended into the, the highest, highest place, place that he might fill all Ooh. things. I like that Ephesians chapter 4. So there's no place <laughs> that, that he might. Jesus yeah. is not Lord. He is Lord in every situation, in every place. He descended to the lowest place. He ascended to the highest place that he might fill all things. One Ephesians translation says 14. that he might fill everything, yes. everywhere with himself. <laughs> <laughs> that means Jesus is Lord everywhere. It says in the uh, Amplified, in every says, situation, he might fill all things, the whole universe. Yeah. From the lowest to the highest. To the highest. So he, everywhere you look, Jesus Anywhere, is Lord. India, Africa, Amen. Asia, anywhere you go, that Jesus is Lord everywhere you go. Amen. And so his Lordship, that means whoever calls on the name of the Lord, which means you may be in Africa, India, South America, when you con confess or declare Jesus is Lord, there is salvation and deliverance and there is healing and there is blessing. So in studying the blood of Christ, he took his blood into heaven itself and obtained eternal redemption for you us. You know, in the blood of any person is their story. Yeah. Their history. Yeah, the DNA. What, what disease? Your identity. Everything. Your identity. Everything about you, your blood type, your nationality, everything is in yeah. your blood. Yeah. Oh, there's a story in the blood and of Jesus. Yeah, and they actually say that your blood contains the antibodies yeah. of every disease that you have ever overcome. And those antibodies, they call them memory cells. In other words, the antibodies remember how they defeated that disease last time. Yep. And if that disease ever shows up again, bam, here your antibodies bam. are after it. And so <laughs> Jesus' blood contains the antibodies of every disease, every problem, every situation, the memory cells of how he overcame. And that blood has that power for and us. And you don't have to understand everything. Yeah. You know, just like you, you don't understand 
everything about medicine or whatever. But you know that when it's applied, it's going to work. There's power in it. Power. The, the expiration date never runs out. It's always wow. full of power. Yeah, and my mother. And then I heard Dad yeah. Hagen say, he said, well, he was raised in Baptist and gotten saved. He said, but he came over among spirit-filled people and got filled with the Holy Ghost because he <laughs> said they believed in healing. But he said the Pentecostal people would say, I plead the blood. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. Plead the blood. So he said, I didn't much understand. It's kind of a mystery to me. He said, but it worked so well that I would say, in the name of Jesus, I plead, I plead the, blood. the blood. No matter what was coming against my mind or my body, I'd say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. He said, it worked so well for me, I still do it to this day. There's power <laughs> in the blood. <laughs> I still do it to this day. And so, uh, Dad Hagen, I have faith in the blood. Yeah. I plead the blood. My mom would say, I plead the blood, which is just a legal term that says, I rest my case on the blood of Jesus. I will win this case because of what happened on the cross and the blood of Christ. He took it into heaven and he obtained eternal redemption for us. Praise God. So he wow. doesn't... Look at us and say, you miserable wretch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He looks at you through his blood and you are perfect yeah. and beautiful in his sight, righteous. He uses that only. word perfect, actually. In Hebrews, the word perfect is in there 13 times, I think. The word perfect, and many times it's in reference to the old covenant of the, the blood of, of goats yeah. and lambs was not perfect so it could not take away sin. Yeah. But the blood of Jesus was the perfect sacrifice the by the God. perfect person mm -hmm. to perfect Excellent. some very imperfect, imperfect. people, one <laughs> translation says. So, so the blood of Christ. When Amen. Jesus was uh, conceived by the Holy Spirit, yeah. there was no sin in him. Yeah. And he had the DNA of God. The blood and of that God. Blood yeah. Uh, is what we overcome with the blood the of the blood Lamb. Of He's God. Lamb of God. But now it's the blood of the last Adam. The last Adam. The blood of the God man. The blood of Christ. It is that blood covenant that makes us a new creature in Christ and old things pass away and everything has become. Amen. Wow. Amen. So now when we take communion, we wanted to look at this just for a moment. First Corinthians chapter 11, where the apostle Paul said, as often as you do this, you do show the Lord's death until he comes again. When you take communion, he says, you take the bread, which Jesus said is my body. When, when he did the last supper in the book of Matthew, I think it's chapter 26, Jesus said, this is the blood of the New Testament. Or let's look at the word covenant. This is the blood of the new covenant. And so Paul, in taking communion, he said, when you take the bread, it's his body is broken for us. Mm -hmm. When you take the cup, it is his blood. Mm -hmm. He said, as often as you take the bread, and as often as you take the cup, mm -hmm. you do show the Lord's death until he comes again. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that the more often you do that, the yeah. more it will make an impact yeah, we, on your mind and you, your soul. You practice that on a regular yes. basis. Yeah. So it's good to do that as yeah. often as we can. As often. And then he said, when you do this, like uh, churches sometimes do it together, sometimes individuals, as often as you take the, the, the bread mm -hmm. and then you take the cup, mm -hmm. he said, you drink the cup, which is his blood. You take the bread, which is his body broken for you. And that we call that communion, that now you are in union with the master, in union with Christ in his death and in his resurrection, his blood. You show that. So when he says you do show, then we know the word for show there What's is the word promulgate. promulgate. You do show, promulgate. Now we know that you're actually uh, doing a demonstration, kind of like when Abraham took Isaac up the mountain. Yes. He was simply giving a demonstration of what uh, God would do with his only son. Right. And so Abraham is acting that out. And now Jesus is the lamb of God, the sacrifice for us. Mm -hmm. But here he says, when you take communion, you're actually showing who are you showing? 
Well, I believe you're showing not only publicly, but unseen powers. You're showing that I am now in blood covenant mm -hmm. with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the Son of God. What does promulgate mean? So the word promulgate, you do show, means to put a law or decree into effect by an official declaration. To put a law or a decree, decree. into effect by official proclamation or declaration. Mm -hmm. All right, so the example, I was preaching in Mexico and my interpreter said, the example of promulgate, he said in Spanish, is when you say, I now pronounce you husband and wife, like in a wedding ceremony, and you come to the end of promulgate. it, and I now promulgate, I officially declare it is a legal fact that you are now husband and wife. These two have become one. It's so holy. So imagine your, yes. your uh, communion oh. with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You do declare these two have now become one. When you do that, that's a legal declaration. Mm -hmm. And you do show. So you could say, I'd like for the every devil, every demon, I'd like to show that I am legally now in blood covenant with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And Satan, it is illegal for you to put anything on me that right. Jesus bore for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a if, public thing. Yeah. So if sickness comes around or depression or shame, you say, I am in union, communion, covenant with Jesus Christ. And now Satan, I command you to stop your maneuvers and operations against me now. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. You know, that's what you have to do. You do show. Jesus said the thief comes before to steal, kill, yeah. and to destroy. And uh, if we don't know yeah. about the power of the blood, yeah. and we don't know about how to promulgate and how to yeah. declare and take a communion wow. and speak, then the devil will steal, yeah. he'll kill, and he will destroy. But once you know, yeah. <laughs> and you know what you're saying, and yeah. you address the enemy, you wow. address that thief, you address the one who's destroying your life, you say, get out of here. In the name of Jesus, it's not legal. Yeah. It is illegal. That's what the Lord told me when Dylan, when Dylan was when, sick. When he was diagnosed with mm -hmm. leukemia, we took communion together many times, and we said, Satan, you have to take your hands off of our grandson's body. It is illegal for you to put leukemia on him. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. And I just know that God wants us to know these things so we can stand yeah. up and fight. Yes. Because the devil is a meaning. Come after your children, yes. your grandchildren, your health, your destiny, your future. And so you have authority as a believer because of your union with Christ. So the blood is a weapon yes. of our warfare that's mighty through yes. God. You resist the devil. Yes. We overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb and the Amen. word of our testimony Amen. in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. Oh, that's powerful. Wow. We I think if you just say the reference, the devil starts running. Revelation 12, 11, <laughs> that you overcome the accuser by the blood of the lamb because with yes. the accusation mm. lets him get in to give you guilt or condemnation. And now your faith is not going to function mm. right mm -mm. if you're under guilt and condemnation. Mm -hmm. So the moment the blood is applied, then the sin, the shame, the guilt is removed. The accusation must be stopped. And now you are able to receive the blessing of the Amen. Lord. So first Corinthians 10, 16. I don't want to forget this. Let's get First there. Corinthians 10, 16, Paul says, when you take communion, he talks about the blood in the cup. He says, when you take communion, you take this cup of blessing. Ooh. He calls the blood the cup of <laughs> blessing. That means Christ has redeemed us from yes. the curse, and now the blessing of the Lord belongs to us. But so we're us. redeemed from the curse. Somebody might not know what the curse means. Well, uh, in, in Galatians 3.13, mm -hmm. 
we're quoting we're redeemed from the curse. Deuteronomy 28, it says that you're cursed in your body, your family, everything is cursed because of your disobedience. So it but lists Christ all these curses redeemed that come them. on you. Yeah. Sickness, disease, poverty, do the thing. all of those curses come yeah. on you. He says, man, the curse comes. So so the blood of Jesus. So when Jesus went to the cross, he became that curse. Yeah. He took it for us. Yeah. So we could be blessed. So we could be blessed. And so now you can say, if sickness or disease or depression or shame comes on you, mm -hmm. then you can say, I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And I am blood blessed. I'm blood blessed. Mm -hmm. Because of the blood, I'm blessed. My body's blessed. My family's blessed. My finances it's are blessed. My Amen. children are blessed. blessed. The blessing of the Lord. And actually the word blessed, B-L-E-S-T, in the root word in the giant dictionary I read years ago, said the root word for the word blessed the is old the old English, English word, word yeah. uh, our Latin word is it's the old word for blood. The word blessed comes from the root for blood, blood because as soon as the priest went in and offered the blood, he always came out with a blessing. <laughs> he would always pronounce a blessing. Oh, bless. May the Lord bless you and keep you. His countenance shine upon you. Give you peace. Amen. Words of blessing. But those aren't just empty words. Yeah. They're words that carry the covenant yeah. words. Amen. And the, and the Holy Spirit is in those words. Yeah. And when you begin to, like, I'm a mom, so I always think of my family, my household. You know, those are my most precious People are my children, mm. and my grandchildren, and my husband, mm. you know, mm. and I don't want the devil to get in my house. You get to get out of here, yeah. you know, and so I do some business in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is what the word says. So that's this is not legal. Mm. So I'm taking this communion and I'm going to promulgate that it is legal and it is illegal for the devil to get in my house through whatever. And it is legal for blessing. Yeah. Woo! We are blessed. We are blood blessed. Blood blessed. And you know what happens? <laughs> I get chill bumps everywhere. You get happy. Yeah. <laughs> the Holy Ghost gets on me and I get so happy. I'm blessed. And I start singing and I'm happy. The blessing of the yes. Lord in every facet of that blessing. And God does miracles. So uh, to have faith in the blood yeah. means there must be an application. application. Communion is one way that you do show, you do show the Lord's death until he comes again, which means you could do that every day if you want to, but you need to know what it means, not just go through the cup and the bread, but you need to know what it means. What, it mean. what does this demonstrate? What does this mean? This means that because of the blood of Jesus on the cross, 2,000 years ago on Calvary's hill when his blood was shed mm -hmm. that now I am free, I'm redeemed, I am blessed because of that blood. But if you're going to have faith in the blood, then you really need to have a confession, confession. of faith. Well, when you a take declaration. communion, yeah. you're putting something in your mouth. Yeah. You're putting that, that wafer, that cracker, whatever, the bread in your mouth and you're chewing it, um, it becomes part of you. Yeah. You become union with that. that, and then you drink it. Yeah, and it typifies the body of Christ yeah. and the blood of Christ. So and you're in union. You're digesting, so to speak. So you're who Christ you're is. You're acting it out. Yeah, and Isaiah 53, where it says, yeah. "Surely He has borne." Mm. Isaiah 53, verse five and six, I think yeah. it is. Surely He has borne. The word "born" is the word "nasa." That means He has lifted it from us. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. That includes, surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. He has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. That Jesus has borne NASA, 
lifted from us our griefs, our sorrows, our sicknesses, our pains. He took our curse for us so that now we are healed, we are redeemed, we are saved, and we are blessed. That's the power of the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I love that. Isaiah 53 and the, uh, in the Amplified Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, mm -hmm. it says this, if any man is engrafted, engrafted. into Christ. So that's what happened. Yeah. Tell about Isaiah 53, being engrafted. That he is born and now was we are, he was wounded for our transgressions, mm -hmm. bruised for our iniquities. So the engrafting process is that we are in Christ engrafted into him. The engrafting process uh, there is no grafting without wounding. And for the graft to take, there must be an identical cut on the stock as it is on the branch. And then that branch is engrafted and they grow together. So Jesus was wounded and cut with our identical condition. And when he was wounded, we were engrafted into him. That's why the power of the cross and the mystery of what happened there is what Jesus has done as our substitute he did it for us, set to the credit of our account, just like we were there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So now our confession. So we have this confession card we'll send to you. So good. The confession, the blood of Jesus purges me from every defilement of the enemy. The blood of Jesus keeps and guards my mind day and night. The blood of Jesus prevents deception and aborts every attempt of the enemy to deceive me. The blood of Jesus is my divine covering and protection against all the fiery darts of the evil one. The blood of Jesus is alive, so full of life and grace that it perfects that which concerns me, reconciles everything in me to the perfect will of God every day and in every way. In other words, to have faith in the blood means that you have a confession of faith in the blood, and it is that faith that is the victory that overcomes Overcome. the world. So do not be silent about it. I like to say, never run at your giant with your mouth shut. I mean, <laughs> open your mouth. Say what Speak God says word. about you. Put the word in your mouth. Put the blood in your mouth and declare what the blood has done for you, what it does in you. We encourage you to get this book called The Bloodline of a Champion. Every chapter is on faith in the blood. We've been teaching on this book all week long, and we still are not finished. Oh, well, but this is like... The, the last session. But you get the book on the blood. There's confessions. There's uh, declarations. There's quotes from Andrew Murray, from Smith Wigglesworth, Dad Hagen. And I got a bunch of quotes in there myself. So get the book for your offering of any amount. We'll send you this book. And all you have to do is get on markhankins.org, the website, call the office and say, I want that book on faith in the blood of Jesus. I call it slinging blood everywhere. When the enemy comes against your mind, your thoughts, your feelings, or against your family, you say, I plead the blood plead in the, the name blood. of Jesus. I'm slinging blood everywhere. Satan, take your hands off my body, my mind, my family. Amen. I plead the blood. I rest my Amen. case on the power of the blood of Jesus. I think you should just speak a blood blessing over our partners. Partners are so important to us. And when you partner with Mark Hankins Ministries, you help this message to go around the world. Around we the just world. want to release Millions of people. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we'll send you also this card of confession. But let me pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. I apply the blood. I have faith in the Amen. blood of Jesus. And I apply Amen. that blood in your life over your mind, your thoughts, your body, your family, your future, your finances. Christ has redeemed you from the curse Amen. and we are blood blessed and the blessing of the Lord comes upon yes. your life in the name the of name Jesus. Of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we thank you for being a partner with Mark and his ministries. Whatever you give, whether it's large or small, helps us preach the word around the world, complete our new conference center and TV studio. Wow. Thank you for being a partner. Hallelujah. Amen. So until next time, may God richly bless you. And Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Amen.
Join Mark and Trina Hankins for three days of teaching as we unlock the secrets of the Apostle Paul's revelation. This will be the first public meeting in the brand new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center in Woodworth, Louisiana. This event will be life-changing as we learn what happened from the cross to the throne and how Jesus' victory wasn't just for him, but his resurrection gave us victory. You don't want to miss these powerful three days, November 7th through the 9th, 2023. For more information and to register, please visit markhankins.org. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. There is no doubt we are living in uncertain times. People are struggling with anxiety and have a lot of questions about what's going on in the world and how that will impact their future. Do you want to live an overcoming, victorious, and faith-filled life? Faith in the blood of Jesus can help us live in the reality of our redemption, which gives real solutions to real people for real problems. In this book, The Bloodline of a Champion, Mark Hankins explains the power of the blood of Jesus. Not only will we clearly see what the blood has done for us, but also what it does in us as believers. This book has a brand new chapter about his grandson, Dylan, and how he overcame leukemia and a bone marrow transplant. With this offer, you will also get a bonus four CD set, The Bloodline of a Champion. By faith, we are part of a new bloodline, The Bloodline of a Champion. Order this special package today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book and the four CD set, The Bloodline of a Champion. To order this special offer, call us today at 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. I personally love the subject of the blood of Jesus and being a champion because of that blood. You know, when we walk through our son having leukemia and getting a bone marrow transplant and all of those things, this was a powerful, powerful word that we held on to because we knew our blood covenant. We knew the benefits because of the blood. This is a powerful message that you need to get into your heart heart. And my parents want to make sure that you get it because it's been a life changer for us. It's been a life changer for them. Just knowing our covenant and knowing our benefits has changed everything. So if you would like to get this book, we want to get it to you for your gift of any amount. You can call the number on the screen or you can visit markhankins.org. Have a blessed day. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. 